For thousands of years, the sea monsters have been living away from the sight of humans. But then a rebellious young monster decides to explore the human world. Many humans claim to see weird creatures in the sea and the public is afraid to go there now. However, two fishermen don't believe the rumors and get in the water. The night is dark and they start feeling uncomfortable and being watched. Suddenly, a mysterious humanoid fish swims around their boat. It tries to steal some of the fishermen's belongings but the humans get scared and attack him. Luckily, the humanoid survives and runs away. Many others like him live deep under the sea. One of them is Luca. He gets up late and remembers about the task his mother gave him. He has to take their fish to the field. Luca gathers them all and rushes to the field. While the fish are busy eating, Luca swims around and finds an alarm clock and a play card. He wants to explore further, but a boat passes over him and he hides away with the fish. Suddenly her mother Daniela calls him for dinner, so he immediately rushes home. Luca lives with parents and her grandma in a small cave. His father Lorenzo is a cool and careless guy, but his mother is really strict, especially when it comes to talking about the world above the sea. She believes it's a dangerous place, so her family should always stay away from it. Luca is getting curious after finding those objects in the field, and he asks his family where the boats come from. They all start panicking on hearing this and say that the boats come from the monster's land above the sea. One should never talk, think, or get near the surface at any cost. The next day, Daniela warns her son again about the surface and sends him off to the field. However, Luca is driven by his curiosity and looks around for objects again. He sees a gramophone and proceeds towards it. Before he can pick it, another sea creature snatches it away. It's Alberto who is the same age as Luca. He takes the gramophone out of the sea and Luca follows him too. As soon as Alberto steps out of the sea, he turns into a full human. Same thing happens to Luca, but he's too afraid to get on the land and dives back into the sea. His mother asks where he went, but Luca doesn't tell her about his visit to the surface. He decides not to take the risk again, but the next morning his curiosity goes crazy. He makes a statue of himself to disguise the fish and goes to meet Alberto again. Luca learns to walk on ground and visits the tower where Alberto lives with his dad, but his dad is mostly away so he has the freedom to do whatever he wants. Alberto spends most of his time collecting objects that belong to humans. His favorite one is a poster of a scooter called Vespa. Alberto tells Luca that Vespa is a magical vehicle that can take him wherever he wants. Luca suggests building one from scratch and Alberto starts that immediately. Luca must return home but he's really interested in building the Vespa. He loses track of time and gets home late. Luckily his grandma takes his side and Daniela does not scold him. Luca gets braver and visits Alberto more frequently. Together they build a Vespa-like vehicle and Alberto rides it. Afterward Alberto tells Luca more about the humans and their town across the sea. He gives him some clothes to wear as well. They keep building more of the vehicles and ride them together. Alberto says that the stars are anchovies in the sky and the moon is big fish. They may be able to touch it if they get a Vespa. Luca gets lost in thoughts and accidentally falls asleep. When he wakes up, he immediately runs back home but his family has already found his secret. Luca tries to explain that the outside world is not as bad as they imagine but no one wants to listen to him. Lorenzo has called his brother Ugo who will take Luca to live in the deepest and darkest part of the sea for the next whole season. It's a punishment for Luca so he never dares to rebel again. Luca escapes the sea to meet Alberto and tells him about the whole situation. Alberto suggests that he never return to the sea again. Instead, they can travel to human towns and get a real Vespa. With that magical vehicle, they will travel to a new place every day and will live their lives freely. Luca agrees and they swim to the town side. They must follow one rule not let water touch them, otherwise their identity will be revealed. After getting in town, they struggle to communicate with the humans. Luca kicks a ball back to its owner, but it accidentally hits the vehicle of a town bully and Portoroso race winner named Urkel. His vehicle is the latest version of Vespa and he doesn't like anyone touching it. He grabs Luca to throw him in the fountain, but a girl stops him. Julia is a poor teenage girl who wants to win the Portoroso race, but she has failed multiple times. She assumes Luca and Alberto as poor fellows like her and steps in to help them. She tells them about the upcoming race that involves eating, bicycle riding, and swimming competitions. The winner can get a cash prize. The boys plan to buy a Vespa with the winner prize and beg Julia to let them be a part of their team. They definitely can't take part in swimming, but Alberto is good at eating and Luca is willing to learn how to ride a bicycle. After seeing their dedication and hearing Luca's story of getting kicked out of the family, Julia agrees to let them join. She takes them to her house and introduces them to his father Massimo. He tells Julia that they don't have the entry fee this time for the competition, so she should just give up. But Julia promises to work harder, and the boys are willing to help too. To spend the night, 
Julia gives them the half-built treehouse in the backyard. The next day, they go out fishing with Massimo and struggle in not getting wet. Massimo doesn't catch much fish and is about to return home, but Alberto stops him. Because of living in the sea, he knows exactly where the fish are. With his help, Massimo catches a huge fortune and permits them to join the Portoroso race with Julia. Meanwhile, Daniela and Lorenzo get out of the water to look for their son. They get shocked by their ability to turn humans and get the courage to step in the town. They steal humans' clothes to blend in, but the bigger problem is something else. They don't know how Luca looks as a human. Luca is totally unaware of his parents' arrival and goes with Julia and Alberto to sign up for the competition. They wait in long lines while the judge explains the rule. They have to swim a certain distance in water, then eat a huge bowl of pasta and ride the bicycle through a deadly route. Suddenly, Urkel reaches there too and breaks the queue to register himself. The judge tells him he passed the age limit years ago, but Urkel uses his connections and forceful behavior to get registered anyway. He notices Julia and starts making fun of her. He also snatches away her entry fee and he believes that she doesn't deserve to take part in the competition. Luca steps forward to defend Julia and makes fun of Urkel's weird mustache. Ercole gets triggered and wants to teach the kids a lesson by winning over them, in the race, so he returns the entry fee and leaves. After the registration, they get on the training. Alberto is served with every kind of pasta, so he is fully prepared to eat pasta as fast as possible regardless of how it is cooked. Luca also trains to ride a bicycle on the hardest route of the town, and for training Julia, they get in the sea. Ercole and his friends reach there too, and start bullying the kids. Luckily, Luca and Alberto succeed in keeping their identity hidden. They must win the competition and go back home as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Daniela and Lorenzo walk around the town to look for their son, but accidentally make a street kid fall in water. This gives Daniela an idea. She starts throwing every kid in sight in the water. Even after so much hard work, they can't find their son. Luca spots them on the streets and suspects them as his parents. Later that night, he tells Alberto about his suspicion, but Alberto believes it's not possible for his parents to reach the town. Their conversation is interrupted by Julia, who wants to talk about their techniques to win the competition. Suddenly, Massimo reaches there and requests Alberto to help him in fishing. After they leave, Luca asks Julia about the moon and stars. Julia takes him to a neighbor's house and teaches him how to use a telescope. Afterward, she takes him to her room and gives Luca her science books. Julia tells him all about galaxies and planets and how a school helps kids in learning about it. Julia only comes to this town in the summer holidays. Otherwise, she lives with her mom in the other town and also goes to school there. She promises Luca that she will teach him all the things she will learn in the school. Alberto returns after a while and takes Luca to see the second-hand Vespa they are going to buy after winning the race. But Luca is lost in thoughts and asks Alberto if they can visit the school for a few days. Alberto gets angry and reminds Luca that they came here only for the Vespa. They can't live with humans forever because their identity will be revealed sooner or later. Suddenly. Ercole reaches there again and bullies the kids, but Luca faces them bravely. While getting back home, Alberto tells Luca not to lose track and keep following his lead. From the next day, they continue training harder and harder, but Luca's interest in books and schools is making Alberto worried. While practicing cycling, Luca gives more attention to Julia's advice, which makes Alberto jealous, and he decides to ride along with Luca. It goes like a disaster, and the two boys end up falling in the sea. Luckily, they dry themselves up before Julia reaches there. Luca asks her about the school and wonders if anyone can join it. Alberto gets angry and wants Luca to accept the facts. He's a sea monster who can't live with humans. When Luca doesn't cooperate, Alberto reminds him of their reality by stepping in the water. Air Cole reaches there too and everyone witnesses Alberto as a sea monster. Instead of helping his friend, Luca behaves selfishly and pretends he doesn't know Alberto. Poor Alberto feels deceived and returns to his island. However, Julia guesses that Luca is also a sea monster and advises him to run away. But Luca wants to win the race and he's willing to bring back Alberto as well. Luca swims to his house and notices the counting marks on the walls. Alberto used to count days till his father's arrival but he never returned. Since then, he's been alone. He finally found a friend but got deceived. Luca feels really ashamed of his behavior and apologizes but Alberto has no intention of taking part in the race anymore. The next day, Luca reaches the town and decides to compete in the race. He wears a full suit so no one can see his face under the water. After swimming, he eats the pasta while sitting beside Julia. Afterward, he gets on the bicycle. Luca finds his parents on the way and apologizes to them as well. He's leading the race, but something unfortunate happens. The dark clouds cover the sky and it starts raining. Luca gets in the shelter and begs the rain to stop. Suddenly, he sees Alberto running to him with an umbrella. But Urkel hits him and Alberto turns into a sea monster. 
Luca can't leave his friend alone once again, so he gets under the rain too and pulls Alberto on his bicycle. Julia also helps them in pushing Ercole away and lets the boys reach the finishing line. Ercole points at the monsters with his spear and asks everyone to help kill them. Massimo steps forward and protects the boys. He assures everyone that the sea monsters are harmless. Daniela and Lorenzo get the courage to step forward too as well as a few other monsters disguised as humans. The competition judge announces Julia's team as the winner. The boys buy their dream Vespa and throw a celebration party at Julia's house. After a few days, Julia gets to the train station to leave the town. She promises to come back and teach more about science to Luca. Suddenly, Luca's parents reach there along with his luggage. Alberto has sold the Vespa to pay for Luca's school fee and train ticket. He wants his best friend to fulfill his dreams. However, Alberto will be staying behind with Massimo who has treated him like his son. Luca doesn't have words to thank all the things Alberto did for him. No matter how far they are from each other, they will always be each other's best friend. Friends are not related by blood, but sometimes they prove themselves as more loving and caring than any relationship could ever be.